Thanks everybody for coming. My name is John Scott. I'm a solutions architect for East Ridge. And so just to get a quick temperature here, who has ever used Nutex before? Anybody in this room? You use Nutex forms, workflows? Yes. Both? All right. Has they, you guys use Nutex also? We tested it out years ago. Okay. So we'll go over it again, look at it. Um, who has written SharePoint Designer workflow, workflows? Uh, pretty much everybody. Who has written Visual Studio workflows? All right. So you know the pain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's written info path forms? Anybody? Anybody? And you guys, how do you like that? Support. Try to support one. <laughs> <laughs> well, support's always a problem. Try. Right? Yeah, try. try. Yeah. One. <laughs> so, I kind of need you to know we're going to go over, you know, why you want to automate it. You, you guys probably know, but you probably have to take it back and sell it to your, your boss, right? A lot of times, managers might say, well, this is making your job easier. Why should we waste time in it? And we'll give you some compelling reasons to say this is why you should do it. What exactly can be automated? Um, the forms, the workflows, we're using index forms, index workflow, and then we'll demo it, right? I'll show you guys a demo I've built. If time permits, we can build one in front of everybody. Um, maybe try the old cooking show thing. We'll build it, and I'll pull one out of the oven already ready to go. So let's we'll start. Why do you want to automate your business processes? Well, there's really three main reasons, right? You want to streamline it. You want to make it quick. There's also the visibility and accountability. Because with paper, right, when I give you that paper and it has to go through a chain, I have no idea where it went to. I don't know if it fell down a crack somewhere. I mean, that's actually happened to companies before. Um, I have no idea what's going on. And then also there's a pretty substantial cost savings you'll see. And that's what your C-level people are going to care about. You can save the company money. They want it. So to streamline it, um, the business rules or the process intelligence, whatever you'd like to call it, it's kind of baked into the forms and the workflows, right? So you don't have to teach people how to submit it or where it should go or who to drop it off to. Um, it improves compliance because they only have one way of doing it. Same reason with governance. It's really hard to screw up a form. You can still be done. I probably have done it. But it's, a lot, it's, it's, it's harder than delivering it to the wrong person, so it reduces the human error. It also gives a single process behind it. So there's no more, hey, John does it this way, but Corey does it a different way. There's one process behind it. So the, for the visibility and accountability, um, you can view the status of your submit. It, you know, is it waiting for an approval? Is it rejected? Who, who are you waiting on? Uh, you can also see what is waiting for you, right? So if you're a manager and you have to approve things, you can say, oh, I forgot I have to go approve this request form for Corey, you know, stuff like that. And you can also report on submission metrics. You can say, how long has it taken to do this request? You know, what are the bottlenecks? What's going on? What's very interesting is people seem to work faster once you can tell what they're doing. It's just human nature, right? If it's something that there's no accountability and there's no visibility, I might put that as my number two, number three priority. If I know that you can say, hey, why did it take you two months to approve a form? You know, I'll do it quicker. And then ultimately, right, the cost savings. It reduces any training cost. It reduces any time fixing problems. Uh, with, with paper, right, removes paper costs. And with removing courier fees, that's a little odd, but I mean, it's really any kind of physical fees that go with it. Uh, about when 2007 came out, was about six years ago, I did a project for a law firm in Wheeling where they did structured bond deals with Merrill Lynch. Um, and they were just, you know, sending deals, and we used electronic signatures. And they said, hey, just for the courier fees and for the paper fees, it's going to save them a million dollars a year. And they did all the counting. So a $300,000 project, the ROI was pretty good. <clears throat> that was not even including a 30-day process that went under a week. So, I mean, just across the board, it made a lot of sense. It was all done with SharePoint workflows, uh, SharePoint 2007, no new tech. So probably a lot cheaper now. It will also increase accountability, so they'll work harder, and it will increase productivity so you can actually do other work. All right, and at the end of the day, it's money. That's what business likes to see. So what can you automate, right? All right, you know, what can you automate? So in 2010, a uh, survey that Nintex did, so it's even a subset of all workflows out there, they found that there was 35 different industries using workflow to, uh, to automate the processes. And so the top five, right, were manufacturing, financial, health, energy, and government. <laughs> so those are the main players in the space using Nintex. 
And in those industries, you know, what departments are automating? Well, in the same survey, they found that <laughs> departments across the board were, these were the, these were the big ones, right? Finance could do uh, any kind of request forms. Customer support could handle uh, issue management. Operations would do facility management. You know, HR, there's hundreds of forms that HR gives you. You know, same thing across the board. IT, day to day, help desk tickets. Uh, request for new hardware, all that kind of stuff, they can automate. And then, so the common ones, right, like I mentioned, are PTO requests. Every company's got these. Travel requests, expenses, job recs. Every company's got these. Um, but then there's also industry specific stuff, right? So, how do I manage some with compliance if I have to do something with compliance, right? I have instant intake. If I do access management, I can do it. Durham Public Schools, they have a bunch of forms automated. You go on transfer schools. All stuff online with workflows to drive it. And originally this was any process. Thomas next door said, well, what if I want you to go to the moon? You can't do that one, right? So I qualify with almost any process that you can whiteboard can be automated. The extent of that automation would be based off of your integration points, right? Now, if you, if you want, if I want to know when you go to the moon, I can assign you tasks when you come back completed. I can't really send you the moon, but I can automate portions of it. And so forms. So everybody here has done InfoPath forms, or most of you guys here. There's a, uh, when 2013 came out, there was kind of a lot of buzz in the community, right, because there was no new enhancements in InfoPath forms. Um, and there was rumors that it was going to be deprecated. It's, it's really built off an old technology, built off XML forms. So, it's kind of a, an, an area that we're not recommending companies spend a lot of, make a big investment in because we're not sure what the lifespan is going to be. Microsoft seems to be pushing people toward access services or Excel forms, and it's really not a compelling story around either one of those right now. And I mean, as a developer, I kind of feel like I've been fighting people out of access and, and out of Excel for the last 10 years. I don't want to push you back in there. Um, so, in the electronic forms, right, in most cases, they're going to represent your paper process. But not only that, they're going to be the interaction point for any human contact, right? If I need to approve something, I'm going to hit an electronic form. If I need to give you feedback, if I need to say, hey, yes or no, it's all going to be done through a SharePoint form. And a big thing today, too, I mean, every time I go see a client, they see something, they love it, they say, well, that's great. How can my technician get this on his phone? Well, I'm like, all right, we turn it sideways, go to this website, and you know, 2013 is a little bit better, but it's still not very good. So there's more and more concern saying, okay, how can we expose these forms to the mobile environment and make it easy for them? And that's where an index kind of comes in, right? So on the left, you're going to see a capital expenditure form that I'm going to show you later, built for a web page, right? And that's actually for uh, a desktop web page. Here's the same form done in Intex Mobile. I wrote it one time. This is the app that, that actually takes it. And this is for a Windows 8 app. Okay? I did not write this code. I did not do anything. I wrote that form and I dragged it around and it produced this. I'll show you guys more later. It's not just for Windows 8. I have it, I'll pass it around later. I have iPads. So actually, I can say I'm an iPad developer now because I wrote a native uh, form for it by using Nintex Forms. Put that on my resume. It's good. <laughs> so um, the forms, right? They're available for any SharePoint SKU. It's not standard, it's not enterprise, it's just there, you know, the, the, the additional product you purchase. The 365 version will be out at the end of September-ish. Right? That's what they told me. No definitive date. It's kind of around the corner, so hopefully it'll be out soon. I have a lot of people waiting for it. Um, the nice part about it is it does not require a separate piece of software to design them. How many people need to have InfoPath 2013 to develop these forms? But the company's still running a 2007 version of Office. So it becomes a logistics nightmare to say, okay, I need one piece of 2013 Office to do my job. That's always tough. Usually additional cost. Do you have a question? Or are you agreeing with it? Um, and then also, the forms in InfoPath can, can support advanced skill cuts, right? Manage metadata. You could not write an InfoPath form to consume those. Uh, business activity search skills. You cannot do that in InfoPath. It even has stuff, when I'll show you later, with the workflow diagrams where I can actually show you where this form sits in its respective workflow. So that's kind of a cool thing because it's, it's an index. They all play really well together. And then you guys saw earlier that the form you filled out for the Surface RT, 
That was actually an in-text form that we published to the cloud. It was accessible to anybody. No one had to log in, but it feeds back into our on-premise SharePoint. That's kind of neat because in a lot of cases where you want to put maybe a survey or some kind of feedback, something on your public website that you don't want to stand up a whole other form or stand up a whole other web application for and worry about transferring back and forth. So Nintex gives you a way of doing that. And it actually is smart to say, hey, you know, only make this form accessible for a week. You can set all those things up in there. So if you're doing some kind of registration or something like that, it does for you. No additional cost. And like I talked, showed you earlier, these forms can be written to target mobile devices. There's two options. In your designer, you can say, I'm targeting this for an iPad browser. Or I'm targeting this for an iPod browser. Or I'm targeting this for an Android or Windows 7. They'll give you a web-based form that you can kind of lay it out differently, different aspect ratios. Those are nice um, when you need to have more advanced controls. Nintex Mobile will actually render it as an app that you download. It's free. And you connect it to your portal. And it will actually go grab your forms and say, okay, these are all the forms available, all the tasks that are available for you to fill out. And it will actually render as a native application. What's really cool about this is it supports offline. So it refreshes. You set 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I can go. I don't have an internet activity. I can fill out these forms. When I get back online, it's going to send them for me. That's, that's a really big, compelling story because a lot of times you have doctors and offices that are walking around, they are at the at a hospital, they don't always have Wi-Fi everywhere. So you can fill it out wherever they're going, and it will send up when they get back. <coughs> so here's an example of the form designer. Okay. You'll see that it's designed completely in the web browser. I did not have to go download anything. I could do it from my house, from my brother's house, from my mom's house, whoever has a computer. I can go and update this form. All, right. All I do is I grab a control from the toolbox. I drag it on the design surface. And then the key part, right, is I can pick what, what surface I'm designing it for. So right now I'm doing desktop. But I could say, hey, you know what? Show me the iPhone version. You know, Android I did not fill out yet, but you see, hey, if I want to add it, it's right there. I can design all these things. They are adding it with every new update. They keep on adding new devices. So eventually, right, the Samsung Galaxy is so big, I wouldn't be surprised if it had its own entry in here because it has a different size than most devices. So workflows. Um, just, you know, when I get to see some new clients sometimes, they hear about these ideas of workflows, they kind of put the whole entire process, they say, I want a workflow. If you're talking to them, it's really what they want is not just a workflow, but they want a series of workflows. They want, you know, uh, a forms and a workflow. So to keep it simple, I'm literally talking about SharePoint workflows, just, you know, not the whole entire process flow. And it's really the magic behind the scenes. Once you submit that form, how does it know where to go? What, what are the business rules? And that's all we built into your workflow. I'll show you here shortly uh, how easy that is to do with Nintex. And that's where you'll do conditioning, conditional branching, saying, hey, if it's $20,000, we need two approvals. If it's less than 1000 go ahead and approve it. Items like that. Um, and you can also do things like sending emails, sending security, all that kind of good stuff. And this is all SharePoint does out of the box. You don't even need an index for this. Where an index is, is helpful is, A, same thing. It's available on-prem. The Office 65 version is coming out. Um, it does not require SharePoint design. It's designed completely visually. And it's actually, you know, they say, hey, I can design a visual workflow using Visio and upload it and then fill in the blanks. That, that is not actually visually designing your workflow. Has anybody ever done that? Is that a Visio workflow? It creates stuff for you. It will actually kind of highlight it, but it's not. It's a struggle. Yeah. It's a struggle. And, and if you want to change it, it's, it's, it's very misleading, I would think. Um, and it also, it extends the list of actions a great deal. So now I can go and query SQL Server databases. I can go query Oracle database, which is something that Microsoft never does. They never let you cross, you know, cross outside their platforms. They, I can go to web services. I can go to CRM. It even has things to enumerate collections, um, which is kind of key. So if you want to write a workflow to loop over a list and, and sum up everything, you can't do that out of the box with SharePoint Designer. And looping. So looping is kind of odd. If, is anybody using SharePoint 2013 yet? Okay. So in 2013, they kind of they have a separate workflow model. They have a SharePoint 2010 workflow model that you can currently use, but they also have a 2013 that supports looping state machines. Sounds great, 
but it doesn't have all the actions that 2010 has, and also all the forms have to be designed in the ASPX page, it's no longer InfoPath. So it's very, it feels like a very odd story between the two, and what they recommend is you can fire 2010 for 2013, and it's really, you can think about the maintenance behind that, it's going to be a nightmare. Question. Yes. Will it also uh, data mine into Lotus Notes? I've never looked at Lotus Notes action. Do you know, Corey? If I don't... Data mine into Lotus Notes? What do you, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, is there any kind of integrating with back end databases, CRM, and all that? Certainly. I mean, it has, it has a, uh, uh, it can query a SQL Server database, as mm -hmm. well as calling additional like web services and RESTful services. There's a lot of integration uh, steps that, and actions that John can pull up when he's doing yeah. that as well. But is there is there actually a Lotus Note? I don't. I'm not really familiar there, with Lotus there's Notes. There's not a specific Lotus Notes connector. I mean, okay. if you're talking about querying like a Domino database, right? Um, it would have to do that probably through like a web service or through like a SQL Server. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it would have to be probably a web service in that case. Okay. Get <laughs> <Keep> it done. <laughs> <laughs> everything be done. <laughs> well, everything be done, but it's a lot easier, you know. And so I, I know one person written a Visual Studio workflow here. Um, it's very painful. It's very um, very tedious, and also when you start writing code, you now introduce QAs and deployments and those type of things that, that you have to structure. If you're wrong, you have to redo it. It's very time consuming. So when I bring it up, I'll show you more, but this, this almost eliminates that where you may have just to publish and write a custom web service, put it out there and call it. It's a lot less um, tedious, a lot less process you got to go through. So this is an Nintex uh, workflow designer. Same thing, you design it in the web. No additional software needs to be downloaded. Contains a wide variety of workflow actions that you can't find in SharePoint Designer. All right, and the same concept. I grab it, I drag it onto here, and then I configure it right here too. So it's all here. I don't do anything else. What we're going to do is we're going to use Nintex forms so users can access them from their mobile devices. We're going to use Nintex workflow. Uh, because if you ever use it, there's really it's tough to go back. <laughs> um, the way it's going to work is the submitter's manager must approve the request. For this demo, we're going to make myself my own manager and myself the CFO, because if the amount is greater than $20,000, the CFO needs to approve it also. So let's begin. So the first thing I did to make sure you know there's no shenanigans is uploaded these five documents to a document library. Three of them you can tell are just images that we'll be using. And then the last two, I'll show you how we use them in the form, but they are just a simple JavaScript file that if it finds a class of type ERNF mobile, it's going to go ahead and hide the ribbon and hide the left navigation. And some just some very simple styles to get the font colors and everything correct. And we'll look at some more detail later. And then the other thing, where'd you go? Is I created a capital expenditure request list. You can see that it's just a normal list. It's got some default fields, a couple things to point out. You got a person or group field here. You got a category field that's gonna be radio buttons. And you got a category, got a couple category fields that are going to be drop downs. All right, date, time, a couple different fields. Let me go back to here. And you also see that when we go and we hit the new form, new item, it's just a regular old SharePoint form. What we want to do is make it look better using Nintex Mobile or Nintex Forms and then Nintex Mobile. So we're going to go over. The nice part about all the Nintex products is they're right there. They're very integrated in the SharePoint. It's right here in your ribbon. No other tools need to be installed for the forms of the workflow. In the mobile piece, you'll see that you actually install it in your mobile devices to actually submit the forms. I'm going to go ahead and hit the customize. It brings up the editor right here in your web browser. And you'll see this is the default form that you get. You'll notice across the top, here are all these different device renderings that you get, and they keep on adding to this with every new release of Nintex Forms for every kind of new smartphone that comes out, or tablets. So for right now, we're going to go to the settings of the main form. 
I'm going to make it a little bit longer for our controls. Okay. Oh. For the appearance, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that background color because no one wants an orange form. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give our layout class a, uh, a CSS class, a layout. And what's nice about this is this is the only property that will be different for all your different layouts. So this is how you can distinguish on the JavaScript, on the CSS, um, what type of rendering you should be doing. And this one is going to be ERNF-Desktop. It can be whatever you want. This is just our naming convention, Eastridge Index Forms, in the desktop form. And down here, I'm going to have ERNF form just to say, hey, it's the form container. So you go down under the advanced section. And this is where you can specify some more stuff as far as what other agent this form should target. Also, any kind of custom CSS includes and JavaScript includes. The benefit of this is you can put all your logic in the file. It's easier to test. They can test easier. You can also, for your CSS, create a standard forms CSS for your, for your company. And then if your company brand changes, you change the one CSS file and it cascades down. The one negative to this is using CSS includes and JavaScript includes is you don't see it when you're designing. It, you know, you'll notice that as I'm dragging controls on here, it doesn't get the same result look and feel in the design mode as it will when we actually go and use it. So f back to those files I showed you earlier. We're going to go ahead and link over to there. And then also for the JavaScript side, I'm going to go ahead and link to the JavaScript file. You also notice that I've included jQuery and jQuery UI from a CDN. Uh, actually, I just included jQuery. Get rid of this one. Alrighty. And then you go down, and this is where you can actually embed CSS and JavaScript into your page. Nintex does this by default. I'm just going to go ahead and take it out because I'm using a, a CSS file. And there should be nothing in the JavaScript. And then also the Nintex mobile settings. And this is what I'll show you in a little bit how to use this. Go ahead, hit save. It brings up, you know, the new forms. And now the other thing I'm going to do is going back to those styles that I created earlier, I want to go and give all my prompts a new class of ER-prompt. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I'm going to give this one, my attachments area, a ERFN section header. All right, so let me go through and grab these real quick. Just move it down. All right, so our first item up here is with that image. We're going to go to the settings of this one control. And we're going to give it a URL of the image that I had stored in that library that I initially showed you. You can give it alternate text form logo or company logo. And you can see there's a bunch of different properties you can specify. Practically everything on this form has similar attributes that you can customize. Oh. Where did you, uh, let me go back to my snippets and grab all of it. All right, we'll come back to the logo later. So we're going up here. The other thing I want to do real quick is add a header to my form. I'm going to go add a rich text area. 
and I'm going to call this my capital expenditure form. Go ahead and make it 24, and uh, we'll make a bold. Alrighty. You see here, we're just going to start putting our stuff in here. And, you know, the title makes sense from a SharePoint world for the rest of the users when they're filling it out. We'll go ahead and give it an easier. We go up here. You'll see that we do have uh, rich controls in the web browser form, which is a people picker. The one other thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a note. Add a label. And all I need to say is specify a user if you are submitting this on their behalf. And what this is, this will allow you to actually submit the capital expenditure to request for somebody else. Maybe you have an assistant or something like that. All right, and let's actually go in. I just double clicked on it. Let's go make it italic, and how about we make it like a blue? Right. All right. You notice the one thing that I like to do is I like to actually shrink the width of my prompts or the height and then actually line them up exactly where I want them at. It's just a little bit, just a little trick I've had. Another thing I wanted to point out is your category, because we specified it as a radio button in the settings of the list, it actually generates radio buttons here. I know that if you try to do it with InfoPath, you had to go and kind of hack the, hack the heck out of it to get all those values in there. Um, by default, it wants to go straight down. What I'm gonna actually going to go do is I'm going to go to settings. And I want to say, you know what, give me five columns. Because there's five values. And then go across and then go down. Right? And I can do some CSS classes if I want to and all kind of good stuff right in here. The next one will be the actual dollar amount to enter. And then over here is the billing type and the billing schedule. And what it is, is if your billing type is reoccurring, I want to know, okay, what schedule does it reoccur? But I also want to hide it if it's a one time because it doesn't make any sense. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out this panel control. Okay. I'm actually going to add... these controls to the panel. I'll get back in there. All right, I'll put you right here. And I'll move this right next to you. And the reason I did that was because I want to hide this if this is not reoccurring. So we're going to double click on this control. We're going to add a role to that control. And we're going to say hide. And this is going to be the condition. And this is one of the areas that's just a little bit more different than uh, how InfoPath works with, with just the way their usual user interface is laid out for roles. And we're going to say where it's not equals and you can find all these values up here in these runtime functions and everywhere else. I'm going to say billing type. Reoccurring. And so what that says, if the billing type is not reoccurring, then I want to hide this control. I can disable it. I can change the formatting very similar to the way InfoPath works. Now I want to come up here and do my attachments area. 
And I'm actually going to give myself a header. And drop that right in here. And you'll see that now we have our form. And I still don't know what happened to the logo. So I'll tell you right now, we'll just go ahead and delete the logo. Worry about that later. We get all this information. Everything looks good. When we're ready, we're going to publish it. You can also preview it if you want. Pick what layout you want to see it in, what mode. I believe, you know, at the beginning of, of our event, Thomas talked to you and he'll talk to you a little more about the Nintex Live where you can publish it to the cloud and access it externally. If you want to go that route, all your CSS and JavaScript need, includes need to be someplace that they can access them. So don't put them in your SharePoint site and then publish that out if the users can't get them. All right, publish. all works we can go back to our demo and you'll see here now that we do a new item we're gonna get our new form okay you've got our text in here you see we have our people picker control to bring it up and select people and you'll see here that when we pick reoccurring we'll have to go see what's going on there uh, it should show up so we'll dive in there in a second but here you have your new form Let's go back. And we need to fix it. But since it's right here in the browser, it ain't hard to do. All right, if not equals. Grab my whole thing. Try this again. All righty. You'll see here if we pick reincurring, it now shows up. I had a typo. Just like you before, I got a little labeling thing that I can go fix that up afterwards. So another thing I want to show you is using Internet Explorer, if you hit the F12 button, you're going to bring up developer tools. I can now go under the tools section and change my user agent. And this is a way that you can make your browser th or make Nintex Forms think that it's a different browser coming in. So I might want to come over here and I want to say, show me that I'm an iPad and refresh. And this is what your iPad user will see. Exact same thing. We're going to change that. So we're going to go back to our list. I am going to go over to the layouts. And I'm going to go over and do an iPad. You see it brings up the exact same items from before. In an iPad layout, I'm going to do like we did earlier. I'm going to say settings. I'm going to get rid of our color. I'm also going to change it to be ERNF mobile. Just get rid of it. We'll make this the iPad. Actually, I'm going to add a new label. And 
just going to show it down here that that's for the iPad. All right, everything else stays the same. I'm going to go ahead and publish this one. And that's going to be for the iPad. Let's go ahead and go back to our browser. Let's go make sure that the user agent is still set for iPad. And we're going to hit new. You're going to see now that we have the capital expenditure form for the iPad. I also showed you the JavaScript earlier where I hid the left-hand nav and the, and the ribbon for users on the iPad. So that is all working. And the last little thing to show you is the Nintex mobile forms. And so what I'm going to do real quick is show you on a Windows 8 device, such as a Surface, uh, or my laptop that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and pick Nintex Mobiles for Windows. That loads up. One thing to note, though, is the, the mobile forms are very basic. You can't use any advanced controls. You also can't use any kind of rules or extended styling as of right now. And that's one of the commitments they said that over the next couple releases, they're going to get better at that. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to whack this stuff out of here. We don't want any of the requester information. We can't support them. We're going to go ahead and put request date. What we'll do is we'll just take everything out. Got a little bit of wider screen. We'll take this all the way out here. And also check boxes can go to the right. They can only go up and down in Nintex Mobile. The other thing too is your uh, submit buttons and cancel buttons will all be rendered by the device themselves you, natively. You don't have to worry about that. We're gonna do is we're gonna do attachments down here. Uh, and then with something like the billing schedule, it's up to you to say, do you even want to show it on the form or do you want to just always show it and let them worry about it? I particularly say, let's put it in there and let them have it fill it out if applicable. All right, we're going to go amount over here. Like I said, we need an extra big area for the categories. All right, so now we have an in-text form. Let's do one for the snap view real quick, show you what that is. Right, it's going to be your skinny view. And first thing I'm going to do is go into settings and just double this because we have a lot of controls. Now you'll see also this isn't just listed for just these controls, right? There are iPads, iPhones, all that good stuff. It's just a little hard to demo on the screen. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go here. We'll say, you know what? Let's make this smaller because we're snapped. Go with the request date right there. Same as before, give it some room. Give your natural buttons right there, right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and publish this. Forgot one thing. 
Now what you want to do is under the form settings, you'll give it a category. I'm going to call it uh, Intex Forms Demo because I have a few of them. I'm going to change the default form name and form description. I'm going to say Capital Expenditure Form. And this is the mobile version. And for an icon, 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 let me go find my icon. Right here. All right. Publish, publish. So is that published? Let me bring up my Nintex mobile app. You see I got a couple other ones. We called it today's demo. So I right click, I hit refresh. This is a native Windows 8 application. And you see I got Nintex forms demo. This is my new one. What's nice about this app is it actually supports offline. If you fill it out and you don't have an internet connection, connection it'll be put in your it'll be put in your outbox. And at that point in time, when you hit the internet connection, it will send it. If you fill it out and you don't get a chance to finish it, it will go in your drafts, so you can finish it out later. You need to coffee shop, got to get a coffee, something like that. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna hit the capital expenditure form. Here's the form that we just put together. All our fields using the native attach and everything else submission that comes with Windows 8. And then also we go over here and we dock it. You'll see here, it's got the description, the date. I have some alignment issues, but just the general concept you'll see is all right here. So if I want to do that while I'm designing it, you can do that docked. OK, now that we have our Nintex form wrapping our capital expenditure list, it's time to put the workflow behind it. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to go back to our list, just click on it like you normally would, go to SharePoint, and like all things Nintex, it integrates very nicely into SharePoint. Uh, it's right here on the ribbon. I go to Workflow Settings, and I say Create a Workflow in Nintex Workflow. You see it's going to load up. This is the web-based designer. Uh, a couple things to point out. It comes with a ton of templates that typically you can take these and tweak them and, and save you hours of building a workflow. Um, just add a few commands based on your business needs and you're set. You got some business management, you got some HR, operations, project attacking and sales, but we're just gonna go with blank for today. All right, we're gonna hit create. The other thing I want to point out is the just vast amount of actions. We're using Nintex Enterprise, but they've got integration into databases, web services, web requests. Uh, the big thing with the Execute SQL is it works for not only SQL Server, but Oracle, which is a little unheard of um, with, Mike, with SharePoint products. Uh, it will work with anything that we have an old ADB or ODCB driver with. Um, it does do XML and query XML, LDAP queries, all the kind of good stuff. A lot more actions than normal as far as just list and library items. Uh, the logic and flow is pretty interesting because up until SharePoint 2013 workflow platform, right, the Azure workflows, there was no way of looping. Um, even now, it's still not quite as simple as you think it should be. Uh, Nintex Live is pretty interesting because they have all these kind of services hosted in the cloud that you can, you know, a lot of clients are using to push, in hybrid situations, data from on-prem to a cloud-based environment once it's been approved. And just, you see, a lot more operations. They got they got a lot more than normal workflows do, especially around AD accounts, getting a provision, site collections. They can really automate a, a large part of your business. All right. So... The other thing, too, I wanted to point out is the graphical interface with Nintex is very, very easy to use. Uh, I know sometimes SharePoint tells you can use Visio as a graphical interface for SharePoint designer workflows. That is kind of a little bit misleading, in my opinion. But um, it does give you a graphical representation, but this is a much better and a lot easier design on. So the first thing I want to do with our workflow is at the very beginning of the form, you remember that we asked them, hey, 
if you're requesting this on behalf of somebody else, please specify their name. Uh, what I want to do is if it's blank, I want to set it with the person who created the list item, and that would just help make our logic a lot simpler in there. So one of the interesting things that Nintex has is this, um, commonly, where'd that run if go? There it is. It has this action. It's called a run if. I just grab it, and I drag it, like you'd expect. All right, and come over here, configure it. And I just want to say, hey, if, if the requester is blank, set it. So I'm going to say, hey, if requester is empty. All righty. All right, if the requester is empty. The other thing, too, I highly recommend is if you click on the title, you can add labels all the way around it. It's going to be very helpful because six months, nine months, 12 months down the road, you're going to have to change this workflow based off uh, things changing in your company. And to be able just to go through and read your comments, know where to go to, will save you just hours of, of figuring it out. All right, so I'm going to say, all right, run if uh, no requester. All right, and then under libraries and list, I want to set a field value. I'm going to drag this out. And I'm going to say set requester. To created by. Right. Come over here, configure it. I'll set the requester and make sure you pick created by. And there you go. Now, this is kind of a system thing behind the scenes. Uh, users don't really need to see this too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize it because once you set it once, it really has no bearing to the rest of the process. All right. So the rest of the process, let's go through and send a notification. And let's send an email out to the requester, letting them know that we got it. So we'll come over here. We're actually going to get it. You can have a full search, uh, externally look up email addresses, but really I just want to get it from a lookup. I want to say, okay, go to list item. I want requester. Okay. Uh, subject line is going to be um, received x request some really neat things to notice here is the ability to add attachments clients always ask for that so I can add a file in here um, the other thing too is the rich test text editor you actually click in here and you get full-blown rich text and in inserting reference someone say we have received your amount best for Go ahead and we're going to put the title in there. A lot of options you can do. String manipulation. And we're going to go over here and say title. And the amount of amount. There you go. We're in your email. Uh, we don't have this hooked up to a link or an OCS server, but you could actually uh, uh, give them a, a text message if it, or an instant message if they wanted. Go ahead and save and close. All right, and here we're going to say send requester an acknowledgement. I apologize I'm going fast. I know we're running out of time. Then the next thing, right, we're going to go on to user actions. And we are going to request approval. And I can't spell, so something misspelled there. All right. And this is going to be manager approval, because the first stage has got to go through manager approval. And I'm going to go ahead. It would be your manager. We could look that up based off of a current user. But for today, just me, I'm going to go ahead and make myself the manager. All right. If I can delegate, let's go ahead and say, hey, approve or reject CapEx. Let's put this in the manager. 
Great. And we'll say manager, just, we'll just copy and paste. A lot of these things that you had to kind of go and use the task process editor in designer, you can do right through here. Um, if you want to use, I won't do it today because we're running short on time, but one of the neat things you can do is use Nintex Forms for all your task forms. What's really neat about that is with the Nintex mobile apps, they all show every time you have a task assigned to you, it shows up there. And what it'll give you is one place, you know, no matter where that site is or where that, you know, that site collection, that site, um, they'll all be aggregated to your Nintex mobile app. You can go through and you can complete it right there. So a lot of clients really like that idea that their technicians can just use their iPhone, use their Android phones, um, their Windows phones, their iPads, or surfaces. You take it with them and complete it wherever they're at. You don't have to sit down on a computer. Uh, like I said, for today, I'm just going to do a default form because I don't have time. You already saw how to use Nintex forms. All right. And some item permissions if you want to set up, like, who's allowed to change this. Like I said, we'll, you can get a lot more. We'll worry about that later. So we'll hit, hit save. All right. And what I'm going to do is if it's declined, I want to send an email saying uh, it, it's been rejected. Well, I already have all the email stuff in there. I just need to kind of change the body a little bit. So one of the things that's really cool about Nintex, because usually a lot of your emails are very similar, just with a little tweaks, is you can go over, copy, right-click, once you're going to paste it right there. All righty. And I'm going to say send requester or rejection. Right, and we'll just go in here, we're going to configure it, and all we got to do is just change the email saying your manager has rejected your request for blah, blah, blah. The only thing, too, I forgot to point out is if you guys are using mobile a lot and just have plain text, you can go ahead and do that and it won't send over any kind of HTML in there. Let me save this. All right, we're going to go over here and do the logic and flow. We're going to grab the set of condition, which is an if statement, right? And we're going to say uh, direct CFO approval. We'll say need CFO approval. And what we'll do is we'll actually say less than 20,000. Or twenty thousand dollars or more. Okay. Open it up, and we'll just go to the current item and the, and the list item we're working on. We're going to say if the amount is greater than or equal to value, we can do lookups. We'll say twenty thousand. All right. So. If it's less than 20,000, it's already been approved. I'm going to copy my email. It's going to be very similar. I'm going to say send requester approved. We should go ahead and configure and say your, CF, your manager, your CFO, no, your manager. All right. But if it comes down here and CFO approved, um, you can do it. So for time's sake, so I'm just going to copy. I'm going to paste. Look at that. It kind of copied everything in there, which is pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And I can keep that one, actually. And what we're going to do is just configure that. And say CFO. And we'll call this CFO. And we'll go ahead and save and close. And now keep in mind that if this was a real live system, you would want to change the assignee to your CFO name. Not just me. We'll configure this to say your CFO has rejected it. We'll copy. We'll go ahead and paste it in there. Cool. All right. We'll just configure that one. And we'll say your CFO has approved your request. All right.
right. We'll go over to workflow settings. I want this thing to start uh, manually. Start when an item is created. Hit the yes. What's neat about it is you can do conditional. And you can set up a condition saying, hey, only start this thing if some value equals some value, which is pretty neat. One other thing to mention, we're not demoing, is you can schedule your site workflows, so it sometimes avoids the need of writing custom timer jobs. Uh, one of the other things, too, is if you're having problems, turn on verbose logging, see where you're at. And if you want to do your own forms for the initiation or the start form, but like I said, for today, we're going to leave that off. We'll go ahead and hit save, and we're going to publish. We're going to call this the cap. And to sit here and publish. All done through the web browser, no additional tools required. It has been published. Okay, so now it's published. We're going to go back to our form. And what I have done is I've modified our home page to now give us the status of our CapEx approval and then also any workflow tasks that are created. So the first thing is we're going to come in, we're going to see our beautiful new Nintex form and say, I would like a new monitor to put that on here. I'm requesting it from myself. Say I can be 300% more productive if I had a 30 inch monitor. All right, and it's going to be a hardware request. And uh, you know, 30 inch software, probably about what, $1,000? I'm not sure. All right, it's a one time billing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and save. You see that it's in progress right now. Um, we should be getting email shortly. Like I said, it's the first time the workflow runs. A uh, thing to point out is Nintex workflow actually sits on top of the SharePoint designer workflow. It just kind of integrates right in there. So SharePoint designer workflows take a couple seconds to start for the first time. The same is true for the Nintex. And you'll see here I've got my email for we received a request for I would like a new monitor in the amount of a thousand dollars so it sent me my notification right you'll see here it's put the task in there all right uh, one thing I do want to show you where's the workflow uh, actually let me go through here here's the email that you'll get to do the task um, here's the item that we're approving. Here's where I can go approve it and add my comments. One of the neat things is, though, is I can go in here and view the status. And this will actually open up and show me a graphical representation of where my workflow is right now. And you can say, oh, okay, I've gone through here, I've done this, this is where we're currently at. Okay. What I will do, go back to our email, I'm going to click here to add my comments. And I'm going to approve it. Here's all the item properties right in here. Uh, this is a big thing because typically, right, there's a link up top. You got to open another window. This one just puts it all right here to be helpful. And say this looks good. Like I said, we can open this up with uh, index forms and customize it. Hit OK. And there you go. It's been completed. Right, if we go back over, just because it's my quickest way of getting there, and view the status, you can see green, 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 came this condition, went down this way, we finished. Right? Now, something I would think would be really neat is it'd be cool if I could click on my form and kind of see that information too. So, what we'll do. Waiting for my ribbon to get refreshed. Let's 
see why the ribbons aren't refreshing. All right, I'll just do here. And what I like to do is on our desktop version, Nintex actually has some workflow diagram controls that we can use, which is pretty neat. So now you need to go to that workflow status page. Right, and then if you really had time and ambition, what I would recommend is you use jQuery UI tabs, put the workflow diagram on a different tab, you'd be set. All right, we're going to publish. All right, that's been published. We'll go ahead and close this. Go back to our form. All right, we'll go back to our form. Click on it again, and now you'll see that this is what's currently going on with it. All right, and then just one more chance. We're going to go down a... Let's do a greater than $20,000 one. And let's say, I would like a Porsche. And I'm going to request it for, well, I got a request for myself. Or else we get emails. All right, and say, I can get to work. Faster. This is going to be say equipment and the amount. I think a Porsche probably about seventy-five thousand. Maybe let's go to ninety. I want some leather seats. All right, one-time billing. We'll get over here. Oh, I just I don't know why I'm not in there. Well, let's get fine. Matter of fact, let's re let's request this for Corey. There you go. He can get the guy to get in trouble for this. All righty. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want in trouble getting a Porsche. Uh, don't know it's me because I can't spell. All right. So you see, it's in progress. We're gonna refresh the page. All right. The manager approval. We'll come over here and say, "Hey, I approve it." Uh, I think we should all have Porsches. Alrighty, refresh here to give it a chance to process. Now we got the CFO approval. We go look at our form. You're gonna see where we're at now. We come down. It's been approved, but it is greater than twenty thousand dollars, and we're at a CFO approval. So, we'll go ahead and close. And I'm willing to bet that most approved CFOs, unless it's for themselves, are going to say, you are nuts. And we'll hit OK. At that point in time, you see they're both going to be completed. And this one has gone the route of being rejected. We declined it. Shows you nice red. And go about that way. So this is a very simple capital expenditure request that I built right in front of you. Um, you know, cleaning up the labels and stuff, taking an additional 10 minutes. Uh, you probably want to add a status in there if you're going to use it for any kind of production system. But you've seen a little less than an hour, you've built in a, a really strong uh, process to automate your capital expenditure request. Uh, you could tie it into other systems to see what your cash flow currently is if you'd like to. And, and there's really just, you know, it's, it's limitless what you can do. Um, like I said, one of those actions with Nintex workflows is you can call web service if you have kind of a, a back-end system uh, or even write your own web service. You don't really have to get in the business of writing custom workflow actions, which is a painful experience. Um, 
your other option, right, is to write SharePoint or uh, I'm sorry, Visual Studio workflows, which if you've written one or two of those, uh, you, it's enough to make you pull out your hair. Um, and like I said, typically, you, once by the time you write two or three of those, it would be cheaper just to buy it in text, and you'd be able to you know quickly produce more, faster, cheaper. That is it. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks.